Hey, it's uh, Shaw from Central Nervous Systems, and today we're going to look at uh, an overview of uh, purchasing in MISIS and, and the various things uh, that MISIS can do when it comes to purchasing. So purchasing, receiving, uh, invoicing the uh, bill that comes through from the vendor and, and pushing that through to the uh, uh, accounting program and within uh, the purchasing, purchasing inventory items and miscellaneous items and uh, receiving uh, as well as uh, making changes to PO once uh, it's been sent out. So let's uh, get into this and uh, look at the various things that MISIS can do when it comes to purchasing. So I'm gonna go into the uh, purchasing uh, module and I'm gonna create a new PO. Go okay, so <clears throat> PO screen, uh, the PO numbers are uh, there's a seed uh, that adds one to uh, to the previous one, and that can be set up in various ways, whether it's uh, system-wide or by buyer. So if you've got a buyer, uh, a whole bunch of buyers that you want to have different uh, number sequence for for them when they create the POs, uh, you can do that as well. Uh, in my case, I've just got it one uh, across the board. I've got uh, the ability uh, to change the uh, buyer. So I've logged in as administrator, so it's showing up as administrator, but I can go in and change uh, uh, to a different buyer. For example, if I have a um, buyer support uh, uh, person that can come in and, and create POs uh, for the buyer, and then the buyer would go and release them, uh, you can do that as well. So I'm gonna come in here and select uh, of course, need a need a vendor to buy from, so I'm going to go and select a vendor, and uh, I'm going to buy some wire today. So I'm going to use my uh, Dunwoody uh, Byron Cable uh, Company, and uh, it's also a uh, company in Canada. And so what I'm going to be showing you is the ability to be able to use uh, different currencies and in, in buying. My home currency is in U.S. dollars, and but I'm buying this from from Canada and they want to be paid in Canadian dollars. Uh, so uh, my system allows you to do that, which is uh, fantastic. Okay, so I've got my, uh, my, my vendor here. Notice that I've got some information that has already come in and that came in from the uh, supplier master uh, for this vendor and also some additional information on the side here. Things in, in gray, while well, those things I can't change, but things that are white, I can come in here and change those. Uh, and any changes that I make uh, are for this PO only. If I want those changes to be permanent for future POs, I need to go back into the item master, uh, sorry, the supplier master and make that change. I'm gonna go into uh, shipping and uh, um, location, well, location four, which is my Canadian operations. Well, since I'm buying it from Canada, I'm gonna, keep it in Canadian operations. And so what that does is, is when I go and receive it, <clears throat> it's gonna go and have the inventory go into this location automatically without having to do any transfers or anything like that. Okay, so now I've got my, uh, my information uh, set up for this uh, purchase order. Now I need some details. So uh, I'm gonna start off with uh, a um, inventory item uh, that I wanna purchase. So I'm gonna go and start doing wire, I'm gonna do some wire, so. Uh, here's my uh, wire that I've got, and I'm going to order five. Now, if I come across here, notice uh, it says five spools. Uh, this particular item is stocked in feet, but for this buy, uh, for this vendor, I'm going to be buying in spools. And that setup uh, has been done. Um, there's a spot uh, where we can go in and link the item, uh, which is this one here, with this vendor and tell it. Okay, what am I gonna be buying this vendor from uh, in terms of uh, unit and measure? And I'm gonna buy from them in, uh, in a spool. And so I'm gonna come across here. And remember we talked about uh, location with this location four. And I have a unit of conversion that's a thousand feet uh, per spool. So when it goes into inventory, it's gonna go into, uh, for each spool that I receive, I'm gonna get a thousand feet and it's gonna go into feet uh, into inventory. To come across and, and same thing as we talked about spool, uh, I've already set up a price uh, again for this vendor and this item and the price is $240 per spool. So that automatically comes through uh, and populates in there. So let's go and enter another item, another inventory item and go to the, another wire here 
and again, same thing. Uh, it's populating the information. Same thing, spool, and it's telling me how many I'm going to get uh, as my default unit as a measure, which is feet into inventory, and it's giving me a price. Now I could come in here and change this price, and this price will change for this uh, purchase order. Um, but it's always useful to have a price in there so we know that it's uh, not going to send out a PO for zero dollars. Last one, I'm going to do a non-inventory item. So this is a one-time uh, thing uh, that's not going to go into inventory. So generally things like uh, freight uh, end up uh, in here. So the cost here is not going to end up uh, as an inventory cost. It's not going to roll up into the inventory cost of each one of those. Uh, this uh, amount is going to go directly and be expensed. Uh, and I'm going to put it in each for that. So I'm going to have a one charge. Uh, ideally, what I want is a GL account where that expense is going to be uh, processed through and MISIS will take care of that. So right now, I'm just going to leave that alone. But uh, if I had one, I'd be putting that in there. And let me go and change the price. And I'm going to put in a price of $300. So it's going to, <clears throat> it's a long distance charge, I guess. And so it can make 300 bucks. So I've got this saved now. I've got three items on the purchase order, but notice that status is inactive. And the status uh, here on the PO is inactive and of uh, the individual items on the PO showing up as inactive. So what does this mean? It means that um, this PO, notice I can't receive it. I can't change anything on it. I can't print it. I can't send it. Um, so I can come in here and delete it. Don't want to do that because I don't have to do this all over again, uh, but I could and it would just go away. I can delete lines and add new lines all I want. It's fine. Once I release it, so basically once I send it to, to the vendor and I'm able to send it to the vendor, then I can't delete this purchase order, nor can I delete the lines. I can zero out the quantities, but I can't delete it. This is meant to prevent you from being able to create a PO, send it out to a vendor, and end up um, the goods arriving and uh, ends up uh, being taken home by someone uh, and no trace of it in the system. So this way, once we release it, so once we can send it to the vendor, uh, then we can't delete. And this is a precaution that most uh, um, mid and large uh, ERPs have. MISIS has it too. Okay, so let's uh, go and open this PL. And here I have my three items. Um, notice uh, this is today's date, but notice that the initial due dates are different. Well, same thing as the price and the purchasing unit measure. I also have lead time for this vendor, for this item set up um, in MISIS. And so what that, uh, that does is allows MISIS to say, okay, based on lead time, this is when you can get this product. This is when you can get this product. Um, so I'm going to leave those as is. I can change those if I wanted to, but I'm going to leave those as, as is, and, and I'm going to go and uh, open the PL. Okay, so PO is now open. I know this because my lines are open. My status on the, on the PO header shows open. But more importantly, I can now receive... Before they were grayed out, now they're not, and I can I can click on each one of these uh, action items. Okay, so I have this PO now. I want to send it out, so I have an option. I can print it out. I can print it out in PDF, uh, save it somewhere, and then attach it to an email, send it off. Or if I set it up everything properly, I can come in here and press send, and and MySys will send a PDF copy of this to the people that I want. Um, so if I set up the the, the people. Could be multiple people for the for the particular vendor, and off it goes to those um, to those vendors. So an email will go to each one of those uh, people that you have got listed, and they get like a PDF copy of the uh, the PO without having to go and um, uh, print, scan, put it into PDF, all the different things that um, take time when we're when we're doing this. So it sends it off automatically. Uh, so handy feature there. Now I send it off to the vendor. The vendor looks at it and goes, "Hey, yeah, I can't deliver." on Sundays, because uh, one of them was on the 12th, and the 12th is on a Sunday. So um, we can do it, uh, but we can do it for the following Thursday, the 16th. So what I want to do is when I get that information back from the, from the vendor, I want to update it in my system, because I want to be able to give my receiving team um, a daily um, dashboard that shows them uh, everything that's supposed to be coming in today. And uh, so if I've got my dates up to date, then they will show up properly on there. So I'm going to go and 
and click on expedite PO and there it is. Um, and here's my item for the 12th. And I'm gonna come in here and change the promise date. And there's a reason why I'm gonna touch the promise date is um, along with being able to give that information to my receiving team, I also want to be able to say, okay, this is when I wanted it uh, and this is when I'm getting it. So I have a, a whole bunch of uh, matrix that, um, that we can do against vendors to see you know, which one of them are um, you know, continuously giving us uh, uh, items late and potentially we're gonna find a new uh, supplier to give us something uh, on time. Okay, so I'm gonna click on save. And so that's uh, been updated, okay? So send out the PO, come back, made the changes. Uh, if I wanted to, I can I can change the ordered quantities, send that off um, and, and make those changes. I can't delete any of these lines, but everything else I can do. I can change the price at this point. And, uh, um, and again, I'd want to send all the stuff off to, to the supplier to make sure that they're okay with that. Um, but I can make those changes without issues. Again, I can't delete the PO, nor can I delete any of the lines. Now I'm ready to receive, okay? So I can have the receiver come in, open the PO and click on receive. Generally, probably don't want that uh, because you don't want them to go into the PO information. So one of the things that we can do is uh, set up a security so that uh, uh, they can go into the PO uh, side of it and click on receive items without having to click on and being able to open a PO. So they're locked out of the POs, but they can still receive. Okay. So I'm gonna click on receive items. This is what pops up, okay? So I'll just show you, within the purchase order, I do the same thing, same thing pops up. So it's not like they're not getting uh, parts of this PO, uh, PO or receipt is the same on both sides. Um, so now we'll just continue on here. We've got uh, transaction date. That should be the date that you're doing the receiving. Uh, ideally, you don't want to backdate. You could, but uh, that messes things up. So uh, as part of the process, uh, you try to keep it. So they're transacting uh, as things are coming in. If a uh, uh, person is uh, going to be going home, you've got to have someone else to be able to receive after that. So I'm going to keep the same, and I'm going to check off the items that I want to uh, receive. Now notice uh, the quantities that are all populating, which is uh, handy. So uh, this is based on what was on order. Now I can come in here and change this. So let's uh, say that we ordered five, but only received three. So I'm gonna change that to that. And same thing here, I'm gonna change that to two. Gonna leave the freight uh, as is and, and gonna go and uh, receive this. Okay, so now I have uh, different quantities than what uh, I had ordered, but away to go. So I'm gonna click on receive checked. Wonderful. Notice that they've gone to zero. I'm going to close this. Notice now I have an ordered, I have a received, and I have a balance that's uh, to be uh, to be received. So now I've got inventory in my system. I've got uh, three spools and and two spools that has uh, come in, and that's hitting an inventory ready to be used. Notice the invoice column. Well, I got nothing in there, so I don't have the invoice yet. So let's. Uh, Fast forward in time and, and I've got an invoice and, and they send me an invoice. And, and so now the AP clerk's gonna come in here and go, okay, I've got an invoice and I'm gonna process that through. So ordinarily you do this in the accounting program. Well, with MySys integration, this allows you to do it within uh, MySys itself. So I'm gonna go and click on uh, here and uh, click on uh, the invoice and here we go. Wonderful, okay, so now I've got um, my vendor, I've got uh, the invoice date, it went out into the accounting program, pulled the supplier terms, and figured out what the bill due date is based on 90 days, um, and gives you that information. You can put it in a comment, the comment will show up on, on history within MISIS, uh, and push through into Sage, uh, or your accounting program, whatever it may be. So my um, invoice number, so from the vendor, one, two, three, four, five. Favorite invoice number. And I'm going to select the items that I'm going to be uh, invoicing. So just like you're receiving, it auto populates the, the quantities. So in this case here, um, it's showing me how many I've received. So uh, this is a good spot where the AP clerk can look at this and go, whoa, I've, I've been invoiced for five, but I only received three. Go back to either the buyer or whoever they they go back to is the process that's built in, um, 
uh, within within your company, you set up a process to say, okay, if I'm if I've got a discrepancy, what uh, what do I do? Um, usually, it goes back to the buyer or goes back to the receiver and say, hey, I got an invoice of five. Um, we've only received three. Was that a mistake? And and so they look it up and go, no, um, we only received three. We did not receive the other two. So then you can go back to to uh, to the buyer uh, to the uh, vendor and say, hey, uh, your invoice is five. We received only three. Could you please uh, reinvoice? Uh, or it could be our mistake, and, and um, two more gets re um, be received. So we wait to, to process this until that happens, and then the will show up as five. So in, the, in our case, we'll just leave it as is, and then we look at the pricing. So again, one of the things that we can do is, oh well, this one is on our favor, and they're only charging us seven hundred. So again. Uh, if we've got a mismatch like this, uh, we want to go back to the buyer and say, hey, on the, on the purchase order, we um, the value was uh, was this, um, they're charging us less. And, and is that okay? Oh, yeah, yeah, we made a special deal, forgot to update that. So the inventory value is still going to show up um, for 720. Uh, when I make this change, this the difference of $20 is going to go to purchase price variance. Um, if I want to adjust my inventory costs, I need to unreceive the inventory and then go back and receive it uh, and then go and invoice it with the correct amount. So I'm going to leave it like this, allow that go into uh, purchase price variance and, and I'm ready to go. 1600 yeah, that's my total. Wonderful. So I'm going to go and click on invoice check. And it's connecting, connecting. Oh, so I got a problem. Well, so one of the things um, that uh, my is going to stop you at is you can't use the same invoice number for uh, for the same vendor. So the same vendor already has this uh, invoice. Again, stops you from from trying to um, invoice the same thing twice. So maybe someone went into the accounting program and already keyed this in and should have come through here. They were in a hurry. They needed a check, whatever it may be. They've done that. This stops you from going, whoa, I'm going to be processing two things uh, for the same uh, uh, invoice and, and then you can take steps. But in this case, I made a mistake and it was actually 54. And so now I'm good and I'm going to push that across. So what this is going to do is going to create the invoice in uh, the accounting program. Don't have to go and key it at all in that program. Now it's ready for whoever is ready to cut the checks. Uh, the invoice is there for you to be able to uh, pay it without having to do anything extra. It's all been taken care of with MISIS uh, in the background. Okay. So really handy uh, avoids uh, duplication and uh, duplication errors paying for things that we did not receive um, so again very useful a lot of the higher end erps this is what they do guess what mysis can handle that as well wonderful okay so we've gone through creating po we've uh, done an inventory item miscellaneous item and um, open the po send it off to the vendor make changes to dates and came back and received and then uh, got the bill from the vendor and invoiced it through. So hopefully this gives you a uh, flavor of the different things that MISIS can do. As you can see, uh, it can do quite a bit. And a lot of um, higher end ERPs uh, handle um, things this way and MISIS can do it as well. So a whole bunch of things that MISIS can do. Hopefully this gives you a good overview of, um, of the purchasing side of it. And uh, any questions, uh, give us a shout and uh, uh, we'll see you next time when we have uh, another topic uh, to uh, talk about. Thanks a lot.